mother like that. I... Thank you. Oh. Oh, thank you very much. Naughty, naughty. There he is. Martha, dear, I want to talk to you a moment. Please. Certainly, Frau Frieda. Martha, I am through with Bruno. Come, come, Fraulein Frieda. It can't be as bad as all that. Oh, he's a brute. He tramples on my finer feelings. He continually insults me. He even makes me throw things. And I thought you two were so happy. Oh, no, I'm not happy. He, he bores me. That's it. He really does bore me. What, after seven years? Seven years. Seven years of my life devoted to a maniac. Oh, I should have known better. Nobody can be happy with a poet. Martha, who is that young man out there? He's a poet. Another poet? Oh, and he seemed to be so healthy. I guess he's healthy enough, all right. He told me he walked 60 miles with the mountain climbers to get here. Mountain climbers? He walked 60 miles on his feet? Oh, Martha, bring him in. No, no, Fraulein. Herr Weber wouldn't like it. Oh, please, Martha, do bring him in for just a moment. Please. The fresh air of the mountains might, might give me strength to go on with the battle of life. Martha, please. All right, I'll get him for you. Fraulein Frieda Hartzelt would like to see you for a minute. Frieda Hartzelt? You mean the great prima donna? Is that who she is? But what does she want to see me about? Fresh air, I believe she said. He must have directed you wrong. Uh -huh. Two blocks straight ahead. Four blocks to the left. Three blocks to the right. One block straight ahead. Five blocks to the left. And two blocks to the right. Four blocks straight ahead. I'm Carl Roder. I know all about you, Herr Roder. You're a poet and a mountain climber. Do sit down. Oh, oh no, not there, please. Yes. Yeah. Oh. Did you really walk 60 miles? What? Oh, yes, from Eberndorf. Oh, that must be wonderful. To rise at dawn and climb a hill, breathing in the fresh air of the mountain, and walk for miles and miles and miles. Oh, you love walking, Fräulein. Oh, my goodness, no. Oh. I mean, uh, I don't get a chance to walk, to be myself, to be free. I'm stifled in this world of make-believe. I yearn for, uh, for... Fresh uh, air. Uh, fresh air. And a uh, little human sympathy. I don't get it from my fellow artists. They want to talk of nothing but themselves. <laughs> they never listen to my hopes. My problem. If I could only help you, Fräulein. Oh, you can help. I'm through with that woman. Uh, Bruno, wait. She's insulted me in my art for the last time. I'm going away. Far away. No, 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 Bruno, wait. for heaven's sake. Hey. Listen. Hey. Oh. This is the place, Father. There's the sign, see? Oh, I can hardly believe we found it at last. Hurry up. Carl must be waiting. <laughs> now, here I am talking with you, just as if you were like any other girl. <laughs> Why shouldn't I be like any other girl? Oh, because you're famous, and important, and beautiful. Oh, now I know you're a poet. Oh, I'm just a poet on Sundays. What do you do on the other days of the week? Go to school. You still go to school? Oh, no, I'm the teacher. Oh, <laughs> you know that. Yes. Oh, I'd like to be in your class and have you teach. Uh, Herr Rhoda. Yes. Herr Lessing and his daughter are here. Oh, yes. Thank you. Excuse me for a while. Thank you. Perhaps. Mm. Oh. Uh, Martha, show Herr Rhoda's friends in here. The Fräulein Hofstelt. If you please, Martha, dear. And did you walk from Avendorf too, Fräulein? Oh, no. We came in the Burgomaster's carriage. I am here in Munich in what you might call an official capacity. Sort of ambassador from Avendorf, as it were. I have some very important business to transact with my very good friend, Herr Ernst Weber. No, no, absolutely no. Indeed, I will not. 
been a long time since you and Herr Weber saw each other? Yes, that's true. It's been all of 30 years. I won't write another word until she apologizes. Oh. He apologizes or I don't sing another note. Now listen, both of you, I'm tired of arguing. Kiss each other immediately. I, I won't. And we were the best of friends. He used to call me Appleface. That was the name he had for me. Come on! One of us made that call, the other would come and fight at his side. I remember one night in the beer garden in Heidelberg, I didn't have enough money to pay the bills, so I yodeled for apple face. <laughs> and did he help you pay the bills? No, he helped me get away. <laughs> Just a little something I wrote, Anne. I thought you might like it. The name of the song is Little Star. I make up things to say on my way to you, on my way to you, I find things to say. I can write poems too, when you're far away, when you're far away, I write poems too, but when you are near my lips go Just how sweet I think you are Why haven't I told you? I liked it very much. Fräulein, you sang it beautifully. Thank you, Herr Mahler. The words you wrote are charming. Oh, have you ever been on the stage, Fräulein? Oh, no. Well, you ought to be. You have a natural and refreshing talent. Uh, oh. Herr Weber, I just got through to Herr Kruger's house. What did he say? When is he coming over here? His housekeeper said he left for Budapest a week ago. Didn't say when he'd be back. No forwarding address. <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> that settles it. Kruger's out. Well, nothing more to do with him. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Kruger's out. To me, he never was in. <laughs> Bruno, what do you think about his little song? In the show, eh? By all means. It's a very good number. I'd love to sing those beautiful. All right, that's understood then. Walter, I'm going to put your song in our new operetta. Oh, Father, did you hear that? I'm so happy. Well, you don't really mean it, Anne. Of course I mean it, Appleface. We all like it, and I fancy we are pretty good judges around here. Oh, thank you, Anne. Thank you. Well, I can hardly believe it. My song in a real operetta. Hooray! And it goes into rehearsal on Monday. But I should be back in Avondorf before Monday. 
Mr. Burgermeister needs his horse. As the composer, Herr Lessing, you'll have to arrange to stay in Munich all during rehearsals. And as the writer of the lyrics, you must be present too. It's customary. Oh, but I'm supposed to go back with the mountain climbers tonight. Oh, not tonight. Uh, 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 to walk in the night, it's much too dangerous. Never mind about mountain climbers and horses. I want that song for my operetta. Do I get it? Well, of course you get it, Ernst. It's a great honor for me and for Ebendorf. Uh, what's the name of the operetta? The Love Call. The Love Call. What a beautiful name. And very original. Perhaps I'll change the title to The Call of Love. Perhaps I'll change the whole story. You have a big part in it, Fraulein? Why, of course. I'm the star. It's a wonderful part. They're all wonderful parts. I'm playing the lead. You mean he's my leading man. Oh. You're really acting in your own play? Oh, I always act in my own plays. What's the matter? Can't you find any regular actors? Huh? <laughs> uh, Fran Hutchinson, what's the play about? Oh, it's about love, Carl, and life. And then there's a war in it, too. It's a romantic war with bugles. <laughs> it's all about a beautiful girl. And a handsome soldier. A young soldier. His name is Emil. Who's Emil? He's Emil. I thought it was Bruno. But now it's Emil. Uh-huh. Oh, they're terribly in love. And in the opening scene, he gets the news that his regiment is going to march through the town where she lives. So, he writes her a letter telling her he's coming. No, I mean, he sings the letter. Oh, I'd love to hear it. Ah, it's supposed to be a private letter. No, no, Hans, wait a minute, oh, wait, no. now, come back here. No, Hans, now, no, 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 no. no, no. no. I got no time, I got a lot of work Hans, to do. Hans, we need you, rehearsal, you know. I got an orchestra, I got... Listen, be a good fellow. Oh, uh, then please, it won't take long. You must... So, the soldiers are sitting around the campfire. In comes Amy. His entrance is like a breath of fresh air. He goes up to two of the men and sings gaily. Give me some paper. And lend me a pen, a fella says. Paper, right here. Another fella says, here is your pen. Thank you. I have a letter, he says, I must write today. And they say, there it is, a girl. It is a girl, it's not a secret. Furthermore, you may hear what I have to say. He sits down to write. The men surround him and look over his shoulder. I'm coming home to get a look. I'm coming home to get a smile. I'm coming home to get What's a... What's the name of this song? I'm coming home. Uh -huh. I'm coming home to hear a word, a word that I have often heard, and old sound that will now sound anew. Through rain and sun, we're walking on. When day is done, we're walking on. But I am one who's walking on the air. Because I know I'm coming home, I'm coming home, I'm coming home. Because I know my little girl is there. And then the curtain comes down at the end of the scene. Now, the next scene's mine. I run away to be by myself, to dream of my lover. The scene is... Entirely mine. Nobody on the stage but me. I'm sitting near an old bridge where I used to meet Emil. What's your name? Betty. Oh, very pretty. Yes, it is. I, I'm sitting on a rock. Uh, where's the rock? Oh, there's a rock. Rock. That's a rock. It's thirsty. No, it's a rock. Uh -huh. Now, here I am, dreaming of my lover. There's moonlight. Now, somebody close the shutters. It's a wonderful night. There's a full moon shining, and everything is very still. Now, everything is very still, and I'm still alone on the stage. Up in the Nisimo. I'm alone, and the night is all my own. To dream of love, to love my dreams, to lose them all in shadows. I'm alone, wondering where you may be. I'm coming home to get a look. I'm coming home to get a smile. Ah, Emil's voice, he's coming up the road. Coming home to get a kiss. She turned and he's alone. Each other's arms. It's 
such a terrific moment. Are you a Not alone. Not alone? No, they're not alone. An army deserter is to our uniform. He jumps down from the bridge. He points his gun at them and demands that Marie change closer. Oh, what do they do? What can they do? The deserter Democrats has a gun. Now, I run behind the bushes and I take off my clothes. Well, where are the bushes? Uh, there are the bushes. Now, here I am, behind the bushes, and I take off all my clothes. Not all. Yes, all. Uh -huh. They hear soldiers. They mean and Democrats hide under the bridge. The soldiers are singing as they march along. <laughs> we make way for the prisoners. The soldiers of the king will fight to die. My cute, my sweet Mary. The Desata Democrats! The Desata Democrats escapes in Marie's clothes. Then comes the big tent scene. Emil has been ordered to the front. He comes to bid her goodbye. They're both broken hearted. I'm in bed. Like it here? Oh, it's even more wonderful than I dreamed it would be. Only I wish... What do you wish? Oh, no. I don't dare ask you to let me do it. What is it you want to do, Siglinda? Please tell me. You wouldn't let me. Anything you ask for, I'll make come true. Would you really let me put that funny little glass in my eye? What? <laughs> yes, of course. The last time I was here in the zoo, I watched the kangaroos all afternoon. What are they like? Why, haven't you ever seen a kangaroo? Nope, but I'd love to. Oh, they're awfully funny. 
They carry their babies around in their pockets. In their pockets? Yes. I don't believe it. It's true. <laughs> they actually have pockets attached right in front. Well, you'll have to prove it to me. Come on, I want to see this. Oh, Todd and I are going to see the kangaroos. There. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Todd. Well, um, we'll be right back. Young man, mm -hmm. something tells me I should bid you goodbye. Oh. Come on, Todd. Yes, bye. Really think that kangaroos are so interesting? Personally, I think there are a lot of things more interesting to do than to look at kangaroos. Oh, you mean elephants? Perhaps. Oh, I don't see how it's possible they could really look like their pictures. Well, let's go and find out. Peter! Oh, he's enormous! I didn't know they grew so big. Well, that's only a baby elephant. They grow ten times that big. Be nuts! Peanut! Peanut! You see, the kangaroo is an Australian pouched mammal, or marsupial, with a long, thick tail which he uses in balancing himself, and hind legs which are enlarged for hopping. See? Carl, <laughs> supposing you didn't go back for the mountain climbers tonight? What is it? Why don't you stay here in Munich? Oh, I'd feel like that fellow Democos in your play. You know, the deserter, the one who changes clothes with you. Marie didn't like him, did she? Perhaps she liked him better than she did Emil. No, you don't mean that. The deserter? But he did everything for love of her. Oh. Something tells me that this party is about over. I think Appleface would like to see a nice bed. Come on up and we'll take him back to the town. All right. Come on. All right, Walter. Right. We're going home. Come on. Careful. I really mean it, Siglinda. I'll write a part in my play just for you. No, you wouldn't. Yes, I would. And you'll play it. Oh, I'd love to. But I wouldn't know what to do. I've had no experience in a theater. That's the wonderful part about you. If you could only keep that simple sincerity. If you could just step out on the stage just as you are, you'd have the world at your feet. Oh, no, you're teasing me. Oh, look, there's a swing. Come on, let's have some fun. Come on. Please help me up. Oh, come on and swing me. Oh, I haven't done this in years. It's wonderful. Make you feel young again? Why do you look so sad? I was thinking of a character in my play, a man of about my age. Seen everything, done everything. You know the type. What happens to him? I'm not sure yet. But he loves a sweet young girl of about your age. It strikes him like an arrow. Swift and sudden, this love. Just when he thought that never again would he feel that ecstasy and pain. But can she ever learn to love him? It's a very pretty story. A love story. He sings a song to her, an appeal to her heart. Oh, a song? How does it go? Well, I have new words to it. They just came to me. night flies by. The one you used to call? Yes. You dare make changes in my song. I've got a better idea. I won't let one word of it change. I like it just as it is. Listen, Carl. Mm. I'm waiting for my sweetheart on the balcony in the moonlight. That's very pretty. And I sing. Night flies by. You fly. But I... Your love is like that. I Otherwise, 
You don't sing it at all. I sing it. Warm water dance in the arms. Yes. With sad eyes of autumn, I'm looking at spring, asking the pretty thing just one more favor. I sing it. That settles it. I'm never going to sing anything again. I'm through. Oh, Carl. Oh, Glenda, will I see you at the hotel? Carl, hmm? Carl. You'd better go. She's calling you. Oh, I'm so sorry, Bruno. She's a terrible woman to do that to you. Are you coming, Carl? Yes, Frida. The brute, the wretch. I never want to see him again. I'll go to Paris tonight. That's what I'll do. I'll go to Paris. Hurry, Carl, because I have to go home and pass. Yes, Frida. Carl, I need you. Yes, Frida. Here's the blue, the yellow, and the green. Don't forget the slippers to match. Now, where's the red? Red one. Hmm? Anna, you fool. Just look at what you're doing. Don't rumple that gown. Hang it up carefully. Now, don't take up a lot of room. Remember, you must get everything in six trunks and ten, no, twelve bags. I'm not going to take a lot of luggage this time. Anna, don't pack that. Bruno would like it. Throw it away, or if you want, keep it yourself. But don't let me see it again. The brute, I'll never forgive him. Never. Carl? Hmm? I have something important to ask. Which do you like better, the white or the black? Oh. Uh, well, I uh, like them both. They're uh, both very pretty dresses. Oh, but you must make a choice. It means so much to me. Which will it be, the white or the black? Um, I think I like the, not the white. I like the white better. Uh -huh. um, Anna, pack that. Herr Rhoda likes it. Oh, Carl, dear, I'm so afraid of going alone. Only you'll come with me. Say you'll come with me. Say you will. Please. Oh. You and I together in Venice. Venice? Well, I, th I thought you were going to Paris. I changed my mind about Paris just now. Venice, that's where we're going. Why, well, I couldn't go to Venice. Would you rather go to Paris? I think oh, you would. No, no, no. I, I mean, I couldn't go any place like that. It just wouldn't be right. Mm. We could be so happy together far away in some beautiful country. But you must understand where there's this... My school, my children. Oh, Carl, I was hoping. Mm, dear, everybody deserts me. Just think of me tonight, all alone in my little train. I'll be so lonely. I'll be alone, and the night is all my own. To dream of love, to love my dream. I'm all in. <laughs> oh, Frida, please don't cry. Please don't. Frida, I, I, I just hate to see you cry. Listen, Frida, listen, everything will be all right. Please. Oh, please, Frida, I, I can't bear it. Please, please don't cry. I'll do anything, anything. Darling, please, I... And now we go to Venice together. We go alone, and the night is on. showing it to you. It's so beautiful there. No, the streets are always flooded. It doesn't sound very sanitary. Oh, but it is romantic. 
and we'll float down the Grand Canal in a gondola. <laughs> That's what they call their funny boat. And there'll be moonlight cars and the guitars playing and the gondolas singing. And you have your arms around me and I'll be dressed, oh, in the little white dress you said you loved so much. I'll never take the black one again. And then we'll go to Naples. And you can climb to the top of Vesuvius, my brave little mountain climber. Of course, you'll have to be careful of the smoke. And then there's Capri. I'll show you the blue grotto. And the cotton bar. Oh, and Francesco. He's the barman. He makes the most delicious cocktails, especially martinis. I like them very dry. The two hours, you know, the way Francesco makes Don't you like your martinis very dry, Carl? Two 